Welcome back. We're having a wonderful conversation with Dan Rather, and we were talking right before we left about the presidency, how great how pre great President Ford was, and and other presidents. I'm thinking so much about the presidential election right now, uh, with the Clinton, Obama, and McCain, but especially Clinton and Obama. You're having covered, as you said earlier, President Kennedy's assassination, Martin Luther King. You've seen the changes in the culture. Can you believe that at this time? we have an African-American and also a woman running for president. You know, I can believe it because it's out there every day. Right. But when I was covering Dr. Martin Luther King, if you had told me that there would come a time in my lifetime mm -hmm. that we would have not only someone of African-American heritage as a viable and realistic possibility right. Right. as the major nominee of his party, and if you had told me that we will have a woman in my lifetime, I probably would not have believed you. I'd have to say in, in candor, which I always try to give to you, uh, that as the years went along, I thought maybe a woman in my lifetime. We went through the 70s and 80s. I began to think, you know, maybe if, um, with God's grace, I'll get to see the time when a woman is a president. But I didn't think that I would see the time uh, when there was a real possibility of a person of color becoming president. It's one of the things that makes this, uh, by any reasonable objective analysis as one of the most interesting and mm -hmm. to me exciting oh, presidential nomination campaigns in our history. You know, first of all, not since 1928, and even I was not alive in 1928. <laughs> oh, come on, Dan. Of course you <laughs> were. 1920, 1928 was the last time that, that we were this deep into a nominating process in which we did not have uh, either a president or vice president sitting or a former president or vice president in the race. And as a lifetime political reporter and yes political junkie uh, I find this whole race on both sides and the race is developing for November I, I, I have a 3,000 calorie attack about every other hour it's right. exciting about it but it's also important because I think it speaks to what we have become listen we're not a perfect country exactly. but but how far we have come and what we've become as a people when we seriously consider having either a woman or a person of color uh, become president. And that's to take nothing away from John McCain, who's an extremely viable uh, Republican candidate. It's exciting to see, um, to see, to see people so enamored with these candidates and like you said watching it and and I love seeing General Powell describe the three of them and he did as well as you uh, like you he said a woman uh, an African-American and also a war hero so we have three choices that are really really terrific and when is the last time that you thought that we had three outstanding candidates this deep into the race it's amazing that you know each of these three has a lot to recommend them to be the next president of the United States now not uh, saying it's not Hillary or just taking the, the person out of the gender. What do you think a woman would bring to the presidency that a man has not? Well, as you say, let's not deal with a specific right, personality, right. but in general. First of all, in my experience, uh, women tend to read people better than men. And that's a very important uh, part of the presidency to be able to, to read people. So that's number one. Generally speaking, it's a wide generality. Uh, women are more sensitive and more compassionate than men. Now, I know there are people who argue, well, that's one reason we want to be careful of having a woman in there, because a president has to be, be tough. Uh, but I think that leaves out a very, very important consideration. You talk about tough. Man, no man, has a, goes through something like childbirth any time okay. in his life. And the fact that women can and do go through childbirth tells me you know, and I think it just shouts. When they have to be tough, they can be tough. But you ask what they bring to it, what right, they bring right. special to it. I think ability to read people, sensitivity, compassion, and ability to see the other side of an argument somewhat better than men generally do are all things I think a woman would bring to it. That's very, very interesting and exciting. I'm very involved with women's issues and I'm a woman advocate, so therefore uh, I'm very happy to hear you ha hear you express those kinds of views. But you know, we said that, that there are three outstanding ca candidates for president. The fact that John McCain spent five and a half years, five and a half years, in, prison. in a North Vietnamese mm -hmm. prison camp uh, it means he will bring something to the presidency that's unique, that experience. And Barack Obama, uh, coming up the way he did, having a mixed parentage, 
being a community worker in the Chicago area, uh, his whole experience as, as an American of African heritage, again, he would bring something unique and special into the presidency. And they all bring courage, which happens to be a word that you happen to like and use, and I, and I love that. You used the word courage as you're, we started to sign off with that from CBS that has an anchor, correct? Right. And then when, as, you, as you left CBS, you said you hope that people have the courage, and after 9-11, too, to journalists to, to be forthright and to take those risks and take those chances. What does courage mean to you today? Well, courage is being afraid but going ahead anyway is one definition of courage to which I ascribe. I want to stop for a moment and say that I'm not a courageous person. I use the word because, first of all, uh, it was my father's favorite word. My it mother's was. favorite word was meadow. Don't ask me why. Meadow, she she how loved pretty. the word meadow. She just loved the way it, it flowed. sounded. Flowed. And my father's favorite word was courage. And so when I first started using it, it was you know, in rem remembrance of my father. Uh, but I'm not a courageous person. But I, I do like the word, and I like to use the word. I like to refer to the word uh, because it gives you something to which to aspire. I aspire to be a courageous person. I aspire to courage. And I would like to, in my own wee small way, inspire other people to think in terms of courage. Because let's face it, life has a lot of scary things, there is. both individually and as in the nation. And are you enjoying your new television show? You know, I love it. I, I'm afraid to tell you how happy I am in it. I do a weekly news program right. uh, HD. on HDNet. Right. And this is the first time ever, uh, I think it's unique in American journalism, it's certainly unique for me, uh, that I have total, complete, absolute editorial and creative control. How exciting. It is exciting and you know I love investigative journalism. Uh, we don't do it every week because as you know it takes time and it takes money uh, but I love to do investigative journalism. The kind of thing we did with the FEMA trailers we found out and broke the story nationally that the FEMA trailers that had been created and manufactured especially for the were hurricane toxic. victory were toxic and they had both short term and most especially long term very serious potential health problems. And FEMA just kept saying, uh, first of all, nothing wrong with them. Then when we suggested, well, might be something wrong, they said, well, open the windows and doors and let the air in. But that kind of story that we got on and we followed up on, in my heart of hearts, that's the kind of story I love to do most, and I have an opportunity to do more of it now than I ever have, and I couldn't be happier. And we're delighted, and I want to thank you so very, very much for being here on the show thank today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Patty. Enjoy thank yourself. You. We're here while you're in the it. desert. Thank okay. you.